Hi guys, welcome to the Women and Career video blog. If you're watching for the first time, please click the like button and also subscribe so you can see more of our videos. This is back to our guest series and we're here in Singapore with a remarkable woman which will love to hear her career story. She has worked in several places in the Asia Pacific region and different management uh, roles she's taken. She's worked with the Boston Consultant Group, she's worked with Charles Schwab, with Google, with Visa. Twitter of late, she was the vice president for the Asia Pacific region, heading online sales. And currently she's moved to a new role with a startup called Unlock, where she's the COO. We are grateful and happy to introduce Alyssa Knox. Alyssa, thank you so much. Okay, Alyssa, it's good to have you on the series. Thank you, Jane. It's good to have you in Singapore. It's so much yeah. fun to have you here. It's good to be here. So we are back to the questions. Like I told you, we're going to be asking you so many questions, but don't worry, I'm sure there are questions you can answer. So our first question for the day is really, you know, people have heard about you know, your career path and all that. What inspires you? So I think really what drove me on a career path that, as I mentioned to you, I've yeah. been told is non-linear, so I'm not sure if that's good or bad, um, has just been curiosity, wanting to learn new things. So um, I started out in New York after college on the East Coast, and then I really wanted to live overseas. And so I... Um, and, and I didn't have great language skills, and I'd spent a bit of time in London, so at, in the UK, and so I got a job in Australia. I figured, you know, they speak English, so you can and they beaches, so I could learn something new. I, I wanted to come to Asia at that time, but people told me I needed an Asian language skill, which, of course, you know, here I am living in Singapore many years later, and I still don't have an Asian language and skill, you unfortunately. you have done great, great work here. Actually, Thanks. you're known for your ability to connect with people. I hope you know that. That's one oh. of your great skill sets. Yeah, well, I don't need, they don't need me anymore. You know, now they have LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I did used to be kind of, I just really like people. I find them interesting. So I've kind of followed, you know, what was interesting to me. So I, I ended up at the Boston Consulting Group, which yeah. is a great firm, but really because I was looking for a job in Australia. Then I asked them about, um, you know, pressed them for a long time, which was how I got to Asia. And, um, you know, at one point then after a really fantastic set of years with the Boston Consulting Group, and I loved it, uh, I really wanted to see what it would be like to operate in a company, not to be a consultant. And that's how I got to Schwab. So you're just curious, like, what would Yeah, I was just curious, like, what could I do? You know, could I be an operator? Could I do more than consult? Could I implement these kinds of recommendations? So that's how I got to Schwab and then Visa. Yeah. And then while I was at Visa, I actually met Vint Cerf, who is one of the founders, the real founders of the internet, yeah. who is an evangelist at Google. And in talking to him, um, I, I became really interested in what Google was doing, and even though I had no knowledge of, you know, the internet Just per se or online or media technical skills or se. technical skills, I said, hey, do you think you guys would ever hire somebody like me? I'd really be interested in learning something new. And so that started a process where he asked for my resume and I started talking to Google. Um, and I ended up um, helping Google build the online sales channels in Asia. I think you're very courageous. Oh, thank you. To follow your interest or your curiosity, you must be courageous. Well, I've done it one more time, right? Twitter was similar to Google, really setting up here, and that was great. Yeah. But now I've gone to a, a 50 person startup that's just raised Series B. Great founder, but definitely, you know, highly risky. Yes. Um, and but it takes um, a lot of courage to do that. I guess so. I think it's more about deciding to, you know, make a change and really learn something new. Yeah. I haven't been a COO before. I have some things to bring to the company in terms of knowledge of Asia, knowledge of the International market um, mobile market. and data space and then there are lots of things I need to learn wow that's interesting I'm sure you can give us one more tip so okay um, yeah I think you asked me about tips so this is totally different but probably like you I end up on a lot of panels for women women in tech you know how do you balance work work and, and your rest Career. of your life and I'm, I don't really think there's a balance I think there's sort of what you can cope with but one thing I I think someone said this to me a long time ago and I've definitely repeated it which is I really think if you're not somebody who is, you know, if you are affluent enough, um, then spend more than you think you can on childcare. So if you've got two people working in your household for a number of years, my husband and I were spending more than one salary on childcare. Wow. And it gave us the freedom to both be in jobs that we wanted, to not have the stress of you've got to pick up a childcare at five or you have to drop off after 8.30. So it just meant that both for in our marriage, for our dealings with our kids, for our careers, um, we didn't have that extra stress. We, so we you took some, that pressure off kind of. Yeah, I mean, I guess we added some financial pressure, but we took off the time pressure. pressure. Doesn't mean we didn't want to be with our kids, we were home most nights, et cetera, but it just gave us that freedom of not being stressed about who was where exactly, exactly when. Why. 
so kind of quality service so we're talking about tips of course so we spoke about this but there's one more tip you you had mentioned oh well, you were asking me and I guess you know I think one of the best things um, for people is to have a sponsor or an advocate not just a mentor not just somebody you can talk to but somebody who's really within a company or outside is going to mention you as somebody to really keep an eye on and push really, agenda yeah, well. and, and help you with other people and I think I don't know how often that happens naturally so what I was saying is for people who have found an advocate yeah. you know stick with them like um, don't just assume that you're gonna have one at your next company or that you're gonna have lots of them and maybe you are but maybe you're not so to me I think if you find somebody who's really sponsoring you um, you may want to leave that company but definitely keep in touch with that advocate so keep with that, that sponsor, relationship keep that relationship I think it's super super special and not something you can assume you'll have again Oh, Alyssa, thank you so much. I think it's been really great hearing from you. Really, Thanks, really. Thank Guys, thank you for watching. I hope it was an interesting session. So for those of you that are watching, we're going to put Alyssa's uh, Twitter handle so you can actually follow her. If you're watching for the first time, don't forget to like our video and also subscribe. Thank you.